So this re recording is going to be about distractions and people choosing distraction or not. Yes. So we just had a circumstance where we observed in a conversation someone that was very distracted. Someone that was not paying attention to the subject matter of the conversation and instead was kind of all over the place. And uh, that creates its own kind of experience where you don't feel like you're being listened to from this other person. Mm -hmm. And it just turns it, it kind of makes the whole conversation, turns it kind of sideways. It doesn't feel like it's genuine because they're, uh, someone's off in their head, they're they're thinking about something else, they're doing something else, you know, it just doesn't feel quite as co-creative as it could be. Right. Uh, during the conversation, it was us and another couple, and during the conversation, I remember, like, it was very hard for me to be present. Like, in fact, I just wanted to, like, get up and walk away at various different points, and in the end, I ended up, like, going to a completely different part of the room and just I just felt my lack of focus and so in that moment I chose well I'm going to focus on something so I went on and continued a project that I'm working on and I focused on that completely and it just felt more natural than being a part of that conversation and in fact I completely faced that conversation out it had nothing to do with me their distractions had nothing to do with me yeah you for a little bit there I think the dynamic of our conversation uh, is usually that you are able to bring the person in question, that one that was distracted, you're able to bring him back to a point of clarity or presence. And in this particular instance, that was not happening. For, he was not choosing to come back right. to presence. So in, in that, you kind of almost sympathized for a, a little bit there with his vibration. You didn't know quite what you were doing. And then I chose to be present right. with myself. So I left Secret. because I realized that my work there was done. There was nothing else I can do. Yeah. So but in general, people who are distracted, <clears throat> I just kind of, I, I received guidance on this after the, the initial conversation. And I received something kind of clarifying, which was as this shift continues, the shift in consciousness People that remain in distraction will become even more accelerated within it. Mm -hmm. If they keep choosing, to, I got to go over here, I got to do this, I got to, you know, all these things, uh, it will be compound. And then they, when they had two projects in, say, 2012, the energy of 2018 moving forward, 2019, 2020, those two projects are going to feel like five projects, six projects, ten projects, and people will become more and more spun out. Mm -hmm. because they they cannot focus on being their focus on doing is is more prevalent than the focus on being so what about the project that i chose to focus on instead of that conversation for for you what i noticed was initially you you kind of didn't know what to do you were all over the place but for you focusing on one thing was your way to bring you back into an alignment with yourself right so being present with one thing right okay Thank you for that clarification because for me, like, I just remember, like, during that conversation, I just didn't want to sit there. Like, it just felt so weird to be in this place where, like, I couldn't sit still for some reason. So for me, like, the one thing, the one thing that came to mind that was clear was focus. So that's when I chose that project. However, I don't really see that project as being something that is a distraction. I feel like it's just something that I'm doing. Like, how do we d distinguish between distractions and joy? Like what we're actually allowing and choosing for ourselves. The biggest thing is discernment of the moment. Mm -hmm. So if your intention is to go for a hike and you go on this trail, but you take your phone with you and you're constantly texting while your partner is trying to be on a hike with you, that is a mismatch of intention and mm -hmm. discerning that, okay, I'm going to go on this hike and I'm going to leave technology behind or I'm going to leave that conversation behind. I'm going to spend time with the people around me in my reality, you know, whether that's my, my pets, my, my partner, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, whoever you're with in the moment and you're interacting with them in a genuine way 
as opposed to distraction where, okay, I'm, I'm okay. I'm on a hike and I also, I'm talking on my phone and I'm trying to text somebody and I, I should go back and check my email real quick. And, and you're, you're pulled in four or five different directions in a matter of distraction. Mm-hmm. So it's really coming back to the present moment, realizing what's physically around you. What are you focused on really? And bring mm. it back to one thing. If, mm. if you're going to bring it back to one thing, that means, okay, I have to do the dishes. I'm going to be here, right here. I'm going to wash every dish with intention. I'm going to be present with it. Or I'm going to go and watch a movie and I'm going to enjoy myself with a partner watching my movie. I'm going to turn my cell phone off, maybe mute it. Something so I won't be distracted in whatever I'm doing in the moment. Mm-hmm. So me choosing to leave the conversation was me actually choosing to be present with one thing because it was becoming very hard to be present with people who were in distraction. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Getting it. And so like, would you, for example, this project, I think it could easily be a distraction if I ever chose for it to be a distraction. So I think the, going back to what you're saying, if I can rephrase it, is that every time I intend to do something, that intention is what creates the the reality of that experiment, of that project, of that action that I take. Right. Every action you take could be intentional as its own thing, or it can be a, a distraction. So a mm-hmm. walk one day might be very intentional for you, and you're like, yes, I'm being present on my walk. And then the very same action the next day might be a distraction from something else you're trying to get away from. So it's not necessarily just about the action. It's about your intention with that action. Mm -hmm. With you and this project, you can be very intentional with this project. Mm -hmm. You can say, I would love to focus on this one thing. And you're not trying to get away from something else. Mm -hmm. Your your focus is not already distracted from something else trying to do this project. Mm Does that make sense? Yes, it is intentional and it felt intentional and I heard focus when I chose to focus on that. Yes. So that's funny because I think right now for a lot of people it might be difficult for them to understand what the difference is between something that they are consciously choosing and something that they are choosing out of distraction. So and a great way to bring it back to that, uh, there are a couple different things that, mm-hmm. that my guidance is saying. And one is breathing, mm-hmm. bringing yourself back to your body. Just take a deep breath and then realize what is immediately around you. You know, are you OK? So you have your phone in front of you. You're breathing. You're suddenly back to your body because you're breathing. Mm-hmm. And then you realize I have my phone in my hand and I'm texting and there are two people in front of me talking to me. Mm-hmm. which one of these is a distraction? Mm-hmm. And then you put your phone away because your phone was not the actual focus of your present moment. Your phone was something you unconsciously pulled out and began texting even as you were entering a conversation with someone. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's very challenging to do at first because people in distraction don't really realize they're, I mean, they people in distraction will actually begin to say that they're multitasking. That's a big buzzword in Western society. I'm multitasking. What that actually is really energetically is... (laughs) You're flipping through various different distractions. Yes. (laughs) You're being so not present that you're trying to focus on six different things. And when you try to juggle six different things, more often than not, all of these things are done in a very half mannered way so you you didn't actually complete any one thing very well you just did six things very poorly and mm-hmm. so bringing it back to one thing at a time if someone is talking to you maybe choose to put the phone away and if you are choosing to do a project recognize that the project you're focused on is exactly what you meant to do as opposed to trying to get the project done because you didn't want to focus on something else you know, right, because you're trying to run away from something, right? Else. Because you're trying to juggle something else as well. Interesting, yeah. I feel like there's more I want to say, but I think for this recording, I think that's I think the, these are various different nuggets of information that might need to be dissected more and listened to more before they fully sink into someone's mind. 
Yes, it, it would take more conscious discernment. It's not going to be in a recording. Right. It can, this can be the start of it. Right. Or someone begins over the next month after listening to something like this and saying, okay, I have an intention to find out what keeps distracting me in my reality. Right. Yes, exactly. And I feel like a way that I see it sometimes is that different shades of stuff will be around you and you can choose the one that you want to focus on and you can dismiss the other ones as distractions. Right. A big thing, too, is recognizing that the thoughts that you're having in your head are not yours. Yeah. So if you suddenly think, I'm going to meditate, okay, you can choose that action, and then you have a thought, but I need to go to the grocery store, and I need to cook dinner, and I gotta, I don't have time for this. Those extra thoughts that continue to pile up after you make your intention mm -hmm. are the start of those extra distractions. Mm -hmm. So you have to become very intentional with your thoughts. And this takes, this is an, uh, an art form as well. It takes a kind of practice to recognize that you can step out of thoughts and stick with the one thing you originally intended. Yes, that does take practice. And that goes into a whole different topic of releasing the expectation from the thing that you are intending to do. I think we can talk about that maybe in our next yeah, recording. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.